Hey there, welcome back to How to Medicate and welcome to this video where we answer the age-old question Why do women live longer than men? If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you. So if you're interested, subscribe, lay back, relax and enjoy the video. Now then, why do women live longer than men? Obviously it's because they fall smarter. They're way more superior, they're better evolved, they're just better persons than we men are. And that's probably why God lets them live longer, isn't it? No, no, I'm just kidding. But if we look at the numbers, women indeed live longer than men. Averagely, this is between four to seven years in all countries in the entire world. And they do not only live longer, but they also live longer, healthier. If you look at the chart, you can see the life expectancy at birth for men and women. As we can see, all countries are above the diagonal parity line. This means in all countries, a newborn girl can expect to live longer than a newborn boy. Now, why is this the case? The evidence to answer this question, unfortunately, is limited and we only have partial answers. However, what we do know is that several factors contribute to the longevity of women. We have environmental factors, behavioral factors and biological factors. But we do not exactly know what the relative contribution is of each of these factors. And to explain this a little further, I need to take you on an inception-like ride. Further and further we must dive, but not into dreams, but into biological concepts. To explain the differences between male and females. So, let's start diving. Our first stop is Genetics 101. And to simplify things, we humans are basically very fancy robots. Our brain is the computer that controls our entire body. And we are built according to a building plan, a blueprint, if you like. And this building plan is written in our DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Every cell in our body has this code inside it. It's located in the center of the cell, the cell nucleus. And every cell is built according to this code. It's unique for every human being and it determines our biological hallmarks. Did you know that our DNA forms the most ultimate data storage system? One drop of DNA can store one, one quadrillion bytes. I cannot even pronounce what that is called, but ICT guys would call it one zettabyte. This is a 10 with 21 zeros. I will let them come across the screen. 21 zeros, that's, that's amazing. Now to put that into perspective, the entire world data storage of 2016 was a merely 16 zettabytes. So 16 drops of our precious, precious DNA. And that's how efficient we as humans are to store data. Now, knowing that, you can imagine that our DNA needs to be put in bigger packages, in warehouses if you like, to make the data extraction for ourselves more efficient. And that's why we store our DNA in things called chromosomes. So every human being has 23 pairs of chromosomes. Those are the X-like things you usually already have seen on television. Chromosomes itself can be divided in two types. First of all, you have autosomes, which are your body's own chromosomes, and you have 22 pairs of those. And you also have one pair of allosomes. Those are the sex chromosomes. And you have an X variant and a Y variant. And you only have one pair of those. All traits that form the differences between male and female as we see them today, are located in the sex chromosomes. Male have an X and a Y variant, females have an X and an X. And this already essentially answers a big part of why women live longer than men. And now you probably might wonder, where did those blueprints come from? Where does our DNA come from and what did establish it? And then the answer is always the big old evolution. Our DNA blueprints were perfected during the hundred thousands of years of evolution. It used to be harsh times here on planet Earth. Bad weather circumstances, no roof, no food, animals could kill you or even other clans. So it was basically survival of the fittest. The stronger you are, the better your chances were to survive. And that is why the best adapted humans, the strongest and best evolved, had the most offspring. And only they could pass on their specific genetic codes in their next generation. And eventually this created all the humans that now walk planet Earth. So if you're ever feeling down, just remember 
that we are the strongest, smartest and best evolved to walk the earth today. We are the pinnacle of evolution. And all those millennia of evolution led to the differences we see now between men and women. And this is because men needed to be fearless, strong and dominant to defend their families, hunt and conquer new lands. This often led to premature deaths and therefore they needed to reproduce often and quickly. And this already partially answers why women live longer than men. For men there is no evolutionary reason to live longer because they already reproduce at a young age and they could do it often with many different females. So in Dutch we would say men live short but effective. However, for women it's completely different, because evolution is completely about reproducing. And for women this involves 9 months of pregnancy, delivery and then 18 years of nurturing the children. So it's a long time. And that's why it has a competitive edge, let's say, if you live longer. Living longer means more pregnancies, more offspring and that is what wins you the evolutionary race. So that's part of the answer. Now let's fast forward to today, millions and millions of years into evolution. You may say to me, evolution, that's so 2000 BC. We as a human species came so far, we developed medication like antibiotics that can prolong our lives, or surgeons with advanced surgical techniques can cure several diseases. We have all the food in the world and won't starve, we are protected from bad weather, and in most countries in the world there is peace. So we conquered the world. And we have beaten evolution, didn't we? No, no we didn't. Because still today, far from our primal instincts, we are still built by the code written in our DNA. Still bound by the laws of evolution. And still today, each and every one of us is subconsciously contributing to evolution. We want the best evolved partner, a smart one, good looking, healthy, wealthy, you name it. All hallmarks of the best evolved human for our current Earth. You could say evolution at its finest. So now you know our biological hallmarks as human beings are developed after hundreds of thousands of years of evolution and still remain relevant to this day. After having set this background, we can now go in on the three factors contributing to longevity of women. They were biological factors behavioral ones and environmental ones. And I will discuss them a little deeper. Let's start with the biological factors, among which the most important are your hormones and your chromosomes. There's a lot of scientific evidence that indeed your hormones and chromosomes contribute to the longevity of women. First of all, males tend to have more visceral fat. This is fat surrounding your organs. Females have more subcutaneous fat. This is fat under your skin. This difference is determined, first of all, by the female sex hormone, estrogen, as well as the second X females have in your chromosomes. Remember, females are XX in sex chromosomes, males are XY. This difference in fat deposition matters for your longevity because visceral fat increases the cardiovascular risk of males in this case. A higher cardiovascular risk increases your chance on strokes, myocardial infarcts, as well as hypertension, which is a higher blood pressure, or rhythm problems of your heart, all leading to premature death. Then, if we would take a look at testosterone, the male sex hormone, it's a completely different story. It's what make men men. And it's what help men do what men do best, which is stupid things. Testosterone is the fuel for primal fires. And if you ever saw any viral video compilation, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you ever saw a group of men drinking whole bottles of vodka or jumping from a roof into a pool or doing wheelies with one hand on a scooter on the highway, then that's testosterone talking. I think it doesn't need any explanation and you all can understand that it leads to premature death and also therefore partially explains why women live longer. They are less stupid. And this brings us to the second factor, behavior. In male, there is a cocktail going on from our primal blueprint as well as the testosterone fueling our deeds. And as I already explained, we like to do very dangerous, sometimes life-threatening activities of the short term. 
But we also have some activities that could um, decrease our lifespan at the long term. Let me explain. If we take a look, for example, at smoking, 40% of all men smoke worldwide. Only 9% of women do. The same can be said for drinking alcohol as well as being overweight. If we take USA as an example, more than 70% of all males are overweight. This is only true for 60% of all females. So that's a big gap. And as icing on the cake, despite doing all those dangerous things, men are less likely to visit a doctor for medical help when they need to. And when they do, they're even less likely to adhere to the treatment. So that's completely ridiculous. It's almost as we want to live shorter. And this brings us to the last factor, environmental. There are some environmental factors that differ between men and women. And this is mostly visible in our daily routines. In a lot of countries across the globe, there is still a um, traditional setup between men and women. Men are more likely to take jobs and provide for their income, while females more often stay home and take care of the house and the children. Both are tough jobs, don't get me wrong, but men are more often exposed to horrible and unhealthy working conditions. In addition, men more often have jobs that require heavy physical activity, like mining, farming, construction work, and so on. In a lifetime, this leads to more wear and tear of the male body, as well as a higher risk for potential occupational diseases or accidents with fatal consequence. Also contributing to a less long lifespan for male humans. And this brings us to the conclusions. Indeed, we can say that women live longer than men, roughly four to seven years, and that this is due to biological, environmental and behavioral factors all contributing in a mix that makes women live longer. But the shed some light at the horizon. In Europe, the male mortality is declining rapidly and the gender longevity gap is closing. And it's estimated that by 2050, men in Europe will live as long as females in Europe. And that's a win in my books. And I want to end on that positive note. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, subscribe for more upcoming videos. And as always, see you next time. Bye bye.